When I was about 13 or 14, I noticed myself using controlling or manipulative behaviour when I felt like my emotional state was threatened. And at its most serious, that amounted to psychological abuse of some of the people around me. I'd be extremely nasty to a couple of people in particular, um, and I'd try and control aspects of their behaviour and manipulate them in a really belligerent way. And I was also not the nicest person in general. I had a short fuse, I had a lot of insecurities that came out a lot. Um, and that wasn't because of my parents. My parents were extremely good. Um, there were lots of other factors involved that I won't go into. Those relationships or friendships stopped, luckily, and over the next three or four years I recognised these thoughts when I had them. Um, and I managed to prevent that behaviour from manifesting with other people. But because I was suppressing it, every so often I'd have a kind of emotional breakdown over it, and it was very unhealthy for me to not be addressing it. Even if I wasn't trying to actively control people anymore, I was very insecure around them, I was very clingy, and I, I certainly made people uncomfortable or irritated with it. Um, when I was 18, I was lucky enough to be able to get cognitive behavioural therapy, uh, and that was extremely helpful. It helped me to work out what set me off, uh, what problem my brain was trying to solve by behaving in this way, and it gave me strategies for managing these thoughts, and it redirected these habits I'd built up so that my first reaction was no longer you've got to assert control over the situation. At the time, I would occasionally have moments where I'd, I'd think I'm fucked. This, this way of thinking is part of my personality. I can't, I can't do anything about this. I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person. I'm, you know, I'm never going to redeem myself. Um, but I find it a lot easier now, post-CBT. I almost never have these thoughts. And if I do have them, I can get into a rhythm of dispelling them and teaching my brain to recognise them before I'm even conscious of them. Um, I recognise where they come from, I recognise why they're not helpful, and I can avoid them without them piling up. And I'm also uh, able to be a lot nicer to people than I was before, a lot calmer with people, and people don't get damaged in the process. CBT isn't the way everyone chooses to do it. There are plenty of avenues depending on your specific um, needs, your, your, your specific problems and who you are. I tried a form of counselling and that didn't work for me, but I know some people who it's worked very well for. So if one thing doesn't work, it's certainly worth trying other things. One thing can be completely ineffective and then the next thing you try can be, can be fantastic. Of course there are more severe cases than mine, but I think the same applies. The most dire mental health situations, I think, are the ones where you end up damaging other people. And it can be hard to acknowledge that you've damaged other people or perhaps that you still are damaging them. But there are absolutely ways out of it, whether you're being abused or controlled, whether you're doing the abusing or controlling, or on a smaller level if you're just really insecure about other people's behaviour. There are ways out of the situation you're in. You can find a refuge, you can find help, you can separate yourself from the people involved. And I really do believe there is almost always something better beyond that, even if it doesn't feel like there is. So I'll put some links in the description to charities, and I'll see you around Christmas Day with a slightly more upbeat video. Good luck to anyone who's been affected by these things during 2020, and I hope that you look for help as soon as possible.